Hi, I'm Rosie Acosta. I'm a meditation teacher, speaker, and author of You Are Radically Loved, a healing journey to self-love. Look, I grew up in East Los Angeles during the 92 LA riots, and it set me on a troubled path. I didn't grow up with mentors in my life, so I turned to reading as many books as I possibly could to learn about the purpose of life. In my journey, I found that having these conversations gave me life, and I decided I wanted to create a place where I could share these conversations with my community. So come have a sit with me as we learn about, well, everything. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wisdom Wednesday. Wednesday. Here we are. I, I think we need a clap track here. Yes. There has been, it's been a while. We've not done this in a couple months. It's definitely due. We took the summer off and we debated whether or not we'd return to doing these segments, but due to popular demand, here we are. Here we are. (laughs) There's so much to fill you in on everything that's going on. I just got a new job at Headspace. Another clap track. Another clap track. I will be expanding their uh, Hispanic and Latinx uh, content on the app. So I'm going to be really bringing some of that good, juicy culture, mindfulness practices. I'm really excited. Um, And they are, look, they're just a big, innovative company that is completely dedicated to uh, creating more equity in the space of mindfulness meditation and access, you know, so I'm super excited to be working with them. I hope that this is the beginning of a long term relationship. There's a couple of meditation singles coming out. I'm also uh, launching a beginner's anxiety course at the beginning of the year. So really, really fun stuff to look forward to. So very excited. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Yeah, I mean, Tessa, you know, I've been working on this for like well over a year. Yeah. (laughs) So so it's been been a process, but man, well worth the wait. And I've always said anything worth having... Uh, is worth waiting for. So I really am super stoked. But I want to be able to catch up with you. Tessa Mm -hmm. has had a very epic summer. As we all know, she loves going backpacking. (laughs) And she just recently (laughs) got back from Spain. uh, And I think was literally living her best life. Oh, it was so fun. I've never been to Spain. I've been to different parts of Europe, but it, I don't know what I expected. It was so, so different than any other country I've ever visited. So it was really cool to, to see something very new, to experience something very new. And oh my gosh, the Spanish people are just the nicest, sweetest, most helpful, kind-hearted people. I mean, Jorge and I would be, you know, we were trying to buy a, a metro ticket and we couldn't figure out how to buy this metro ticket. And Jorge and I both speak Spanish. So literally my life. I can't figure out those Euro trails for, to save my life. It was hilarious. But this lady, the sweetest um, metro attendant came over and she did the whole thing for us. She's like, oh, you need help? And she's like, okay, boop, 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 like 10 little buttons. And then she's like, here you go. <laughs> we're like, thank you. <laughs> it was so sweet. I said that's the best and I'd <laughs> muted myself just because there's, con- just so you know, little disclaimer, there's some construction going on next door and uh, you might randomly hear some power tools. So I've had a really intense couple of days. I've been working on creating a lot of this content uh, for Headspace and working on a, a bunch of other side projects. 
I'm a big fan of diversification, my friends. So don't get stuck nor comfortable doing just one thing. I think it's really important to always just be exploring different avenues that you're interested in. So, but anyway, I've been working on that. And I was just telling Tessa before we started that my nervous system was completely shot out. I was debating rescheduling our podcast because I was just like, I don't know if I could do it. I'm just so I'm tired. And Tori was on his way to go pick up this U-Haul trailer to go pick up this machine that he just got for, uh, for Red Monkey. And he found this little dog along the road. He said that this dog looked really disoriented and he just kind of drove up next to him and saw that he just was kind of aimlessly walking around and he kind of walked into the street a couple of times and it's a busy street. And so he pulled over and he was able to get him and he, he would, he kept flinching. And then once he picked him up, he obviously saw there was clear signs of neglect and potentially Mm -hmm. some abuse. And so he, grabbed him and he took a, he was coming back to the house. He was literally maybe, I don't know, like four or five blocks away. And he called me and he's like, uh, I need some help. <laughs> and cause he was supposed to go pick up this, this machine thing, like 40 minutes away. And so he, I fortunately was done and he called me and he came to pick me up and we went to go get some dog food and we got a little dog bed and we called our vet and man, we really have the coolest like little enclave of dog and animal lovers because first of all, we call our vet on our cell phone. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I love it. (laughs) That's how it is. Mm -hmm. Um, Calabasas Animal Pet Clinic for any of you people in the Valley is your go-to clinic, by the way. So we call her and she was like, okay, I'm busy right now, but come in two hours and I'll, I'll squeeze you guys in. So we went and we ran our errand and he was like shaking. You could just tell this poor little guy was just having a really hard time. And it's so hard for me to not go into that negative and angry, energetic state of how could people do this? How could people treat animals this way? Like what is wrong with people? I just, it really is, you know, everybody here, you know, this too, Tess, you are the same exact way. You know, it's like, if we can have animal sanctuaries and just, (laughs) you know, have an endless amount of space, Mm -hmm. it's, it, it would be done. Yeah. I was literally trying, because I saw that, actually, Jorge showed me your story this morning. And I was like, okay, so we're going to drive down to LA and go get Kramer, right? <laughs> love it. And I love that everybody loved the name Kramer. So so the the way, the reason we named it, oh, well, this is a really great story that I want to share with everybody because I didn't get a chance to share this on my Instagram story. So, okay. So we're, Tori picks me up. We're going out to Camarillo, which is about 40 minutes away to pick up this machine that he just got. And we're trying to figure out like what his name is. We, the minute, look, great boy, like sweet boy. He's like, he looks like a small labradoodle type of dog, Mm kind of shaggy. And, and just, again, not, not, you know, well, well kept. And of course you all know, I love little dogs, you know, my little Chewy, my little Shih Tzu. I miss him so much. I had him for a long time and he passed away almost two years ago. Um, and yeah, I miss having that little dog energy, but Tori and I just know with three, it's like three is a crowd, you know, we have yeah. these three humongous pit bulls and they're maniacs. So at first I was like, okay, we have to figure this out because we can't bring this child home. You know, this is going to be really difficult. So we got to the place and meanwhile, I'm trying to figure out a name and we just decided Kramer because he totally has Kramer energy, you know, it was just perfect. So it is a Seinfeld reference. It is absolutely a Seinfeld okay. reference. Just check in. Yes. Good. I love it. I love it. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so we get to this place and, you know, we're the guy that he's talking to, he's like the head of the sales place there that he's been dealing with. And then this other guy came out to help Tori load this like 130 pound machine into this U-Haul trailer thing. And the four of us are just chit-chatting Tori and gentleman number. Let's, let's say I'm, I'm chatting with Bob. (laughs) Let's call him Bob. Um, And Tori is chatting with 
Chad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Tori's talking to Chad, having their own little conversation. And I'm talking to Bob and we're talking about the dog and just finding this dog. And I hear Chad tell Tori that he used to play guitar. They're talking about guitars and, you know, Tori works with all these rock stars and all these musicians. He makes guitar straps for them. And so they start chit-chatting. And then I hear through, you know, cause women, we hear everything at all times, all the conversations. I hear him tell Tori, oh, I used to have this vintage Kramer guitar that I used to play. And I just oh thought gosh. that was weird initially. I didn't even think anything of it. So then I'm standing there with Bob and I'm like, hey, Bob, definitely. He's an older gentleman. He's retired, but he's just working this job because I think he knows the owner. And he says like, yeah, he's like, no, he's like my wife and I, honestly, we had a labradoodle for 20 years and we just, we were heartbroken when we, we lost our dog and we just, I don't think we could go through that again. And I'm like, oh, that's too bad, you know, because mm. he needs a home. And he goes, yeah. He's like, what's his name? And I was like, oh, we're calling him Kramer. And he goes, that was my dog's name. No way. Yeah. And in that serious? moment, yes. When it all oh came together, Tori and Chad, me and Bob just kind of stopped and it felt like everything just became so still. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> wild, right? I was yes. so like completely shocked and I'm like, this is meant to be. And then Tori and I, you're meant to, this is your dog. Like this whole thing, ha this whole incident happened just the way it needed to. Tori was on his way back here picking up the trail. Actually, no, he wasn't even coming back here. He was just going by here and he happened to find him on his way after picking up this trailer to go pick up this machine. And, you know, he picked me up and then in the car, I decided this is Kramer and then we get to this place, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, so he's he took a picture of him and he said, let me talk to my wife. I, I don't know. I, I can't obviously give you any answers. And Tori and I just said to him, listen, we are going to take him to get uh, checked out at our vet now. And we're, we have a grooming appointment for him already. Just let us know. I'll post it on my stories and we'll just ask some friends to see if we can home him. So I came back, we came back here and obviously we can't just leave him outside. So we have to introduce him to the dogs, whether we like it or not. And, mm -hmm. you know, we introduce them one by one on neutral territory, which is how you're supposed to introduce dogs. According to Caesar Milan, who I watch oh, I every love single love <laughs> Caesar. Oh my gosh. Yes. Continue. So, yeah. So then, <clears throat> and, and they, you know, Chowder was a little bit more excitable. I think Chowder gets, he's the black and white one for those of you who, who don't know the, the difference. And Rosie's the white and brown one and Brink is the brown, the light brown one. So Chowder is our spoiled child we've had since he was like five weeks old and he doesn't know a day of hard life in his entire life. And he's very um, jealous. Like even when Tori and I hug, he starts crying, like cannot stand anybody getting it. It's the worst. We are the worst parents. Like there's Aww. no discipline. It's, it's tough. It, it honestly, most of the time it's not an issue. It's only an issue when there's other dogs involved, obviously, you know, yeah. we, we don't want him to be the asshole in the family, but he is. And <laughs> so we were mostly concerned with him because Rosie's so good with dogs, big dogs, little dogs, and Brink is so old and he's our handy capable dog. Mm -hmm. And so he just doesn't give a shit either. <laughs> so met them totally fine. And then Chowder was a little excitable, but he chilled out after a while. And then we brought him into the house and then we brought him into the backyard and then it was totally fine. We obviously still kept them separate just because, you know, we don't ever want to leave big dogs with little dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, but everybody was fine. Meanwhile, you know, it's hard when you bring a pet home because they're so nervous and, oh, it kept breaking my heart. He just was so shaking. And obviously to me, anytime you'd raise your hand, like he would flinch because mm. obviously these are signs of him being physically abused. Yeah. Um, 
so then after the vet, you know, we, you know, spent our entire travel budget on this <laughs> said talk. <laughs> um, but it didn't matter, you know, cause it, he, he needed help. He had a couple of, he, he had both of his ears were infected and we did blood work and everything. So then we come home, we do the whole thing and we're just, yeah, I posted on my Instagram stories looking for a home and I want to thank any of you who follow me on my stories and responded with offers of food, offering to send money, like that is so nice, um, p- offering to foster, um, offering sound baths for the anxiety. Oh my gosh, somebody yes. did. I'm like, this is my people. Yeah. This is my community. So uh, thank you to all those, all of you who, who offered that and who were... Uh, I did get a, a couple of people asking me to post it on my grid to so that they can share it. But just a couple hours later, we got a text message from Bob saying that he wanted to take them. <gasps> Yay! So, oh, what a love story. I oh, love this. Sorry it was so long-winded, everyone, but I needed to share. Oh, that was... I love... That's such a feel-good... I mean, we could all use that, right? Such yes. Such a feel-good, happy ending. Oh, that take, soothes my soul. Oh, good. Take me to a hap- whose tail is that? I can't this see. This is a Beha. She's oh, our little star. Oh, there she is. I can only <laughs> see the little tiny thing. I'm like, what is that? I don't have my glasses. She's on. the one that always shows up when oh. we start recording. Yeah. She only she's when the, we start recording. Yeah. She is the camera hog. She wants yeah. to be on camera. She does. So <laughs> I mean, I think if I'm gonna look for the wisdom in that and I'm curious to hear what yours is is I think sometimes you just need to be of service and not worry about what the outcome is going to be because sometimes thinking about the outcome can keep you from wanting to lend a helping hand. Um, You know, I've been in situations where I've been in a car and I see somebody that's living on the streets and, you know, I'm trying to get some change or I'm trying to get something and it's like, oh, it's too late. And then it passes and then it's out of your mind. You know, it's like, you Mm -hmm. kind of go through this experience. And sometimes for me, it's just an acknowledging, like just looking at the person saying like, I'm really sorry, I don't have anything to give you. Um, Just to make them feel acknowledged, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think oftentimes we turn the other way because maybe we're on our way to work and we can't stop to save that kitty on the side of the street or um, we find a dog and it's like, I don't have a leash in my car. Mm -hmm. I'm just, I have to get, go pick up my kids. Like somebody else will do it. And I want us to all consider that maybe you are that someone. Hmm. So that's the lesson. That's my wisdom that I wanted to share today. And just a pro tip, always as an animal person, carry extra leashes in your car. We always do in the trunk. We always have gloves and leashes in case that ever happens. And we've had incidents where we've been in that situation. So... Uh. Yeah, that's such a good idea. I was going to ask you how, if you knew how Tori got the dog to come to you, because how many times have I seen that happen oh, across yeah. busy, busy streets, like heading towards the highway when it's just like a visceral reaction of fear where you you, you want to stop the dog from getting hit. And it's kind of like the dog is running and, yeah. you know, you try to get it to come to you and it's so scared that it won't come to you. Do you use treats? Yeah, we have we have doggy treats in the car. We have uh, a couple of leashes. We have do- like gloves, like thick gloves, you know, mm, for like bigger smart. dogs. Obviously, you don't want to yeah. get bit or anything. And that's yeah. really, you know, it's like to each person. If you're see, I'm comfortable with big dogs because I have big dogs. So for mm-hmm. me, it's easier to sort of gauge the situation. And if they don't come to you, it's hard if they're running away. Obviously, and yeah. you know, there's been times where I've 
this is not, I don't recommend this for people, but I've gotten out of my car and parked it, put the emergency lights on and try to like tell cars to stop. But that could be dangerous for a person too. And I mean, Tori's yelled at me a couple of times for doing that, you know, because it's just like, I personally have just such an instinctual. So part of what happened yesterday that had my nervous system all shut out is we had him in the backyard and he, I think he's a little bit blind on one eye uh-huh. and I don't think he's ever been around a pool before. Mm. So mm-hmm. little Kramer took a, took a little <gasps> swim in the pool oh. and <laughs> twice, not once, twice. And of oh course, you know, gosh. we're monitoring him. So he jumped, he got in the pool and Tori was able to like jump in and just you know, like grab him with his arms. And then I was like, oh no. And he was shaking and I kind of made him feel better. And, but to me, it's like the, I didn't think that he was, he would do it again, but I was watching him. And of course he turns around he goes right back into the pool. And I just literally threw my entire body in the the pool, you know, so I went in the pool, but like half of my body went in because I was trying to like dive in to reach him and the other half like I hit the concrete with my knees and I got like all scuffed up and like all bloody and bruised and (laughs) it's sort of implicit to my reactiveness that I think you know it's like I could have just paused for a moment and just like gone in and grabbed him and and it would have been it would have been fine, but I think it's sort of that same instinctual reaction that I have if I see a dog running on the street, especially if it's a busy street. It's like you have to make sure that your safety your your safety is not in jeopardy when you're doing that. But yeah, yeah I recommend having those those items, <clears throat> always knowing what's around you, always knowing there's a vet around you, where the Humane Society is, you know, just having those numbers on your phone. Because mm-hmm. yeah, sometimes if if you're on your way to work and you have a boss that doesn't love animals and doesn't care whether you're in, you're already late and it's just a thing and you're trying to just talk yourself into not doing it, you know, have a friend's number or somebody that you can call to say, hey, you know, I found this dog can you watch them until whatever? Like, I feel like most people are pretty accommodating when they're told what to do. Mm Haven't you ever heard that? I think the book is called The Power of Influence and how there was a study. I can't even remember the author's name. Hopefully we can find it. Maybe Kathy will find it and put it in the show notes. But the book is called The Power of Influence. And he's talking about the power of having direction. And sometimes we need somebody to tell us what to do and how, when you're in a car accident, if you witness a car accident, Mm -hmm. most of the time, the majority of the people won't stop because they think somebody else is going to stop. Right. Or people think, oh, somebody else, somebody had to have already called 911. Somebody else, you know, it's Mm -hmm. just an instinctual thing. You know, it's sort of this group mentality when there's more people around, it's almost like, People think somebody else will do it, but that is actually uh, not the case at all. And that's really when you have to ask the questions and stop and say, did somebody do this yet? No, then I have to be the person to call, you Mm -hmm. know, or if you're the person that, so this is the recommendation, which I really loved in the book that he says he was in this car wreck and because he knew this information, he turned to the first person that he saw that had stopped and said, you call the ambulance and then pointed at another one and said, you call the police. So it was like this, and you grab a a jacket to cover this person. You know, it's like people are in shock or if there's something that happens in, in that capacity, people need to be told what to do. Yeah, totally. So I think they're those personalities that will react in that way, instinctually, they'll start directing people. And there are those of us that will freeze. Um, So it's kind of like a knowing your personality. If you've never been in a situation like that, though, you don't really know how you're going to react. Until you true. Until you're there. Situation. Yeah. Yeah. But that's such good advice. I think when I... When I was listening to you talk about this story and you brought up Caesar and I just, I love animals. I mean, you all know, I, my cats, my dogs, they're my babies. They're my fur babies. I feel like they're my children. And I think about it, people, 
and neglect and clear signs of neglect and clear signs of um, animal abuse. Obviously, that's such a heartbreaker and I can't even like really fathom how that happens, but it does. And so I always think about when you're making the decision to uh, adopt an animal or to buy an animal, whatever the case may be, think about like your lifestyle and, um, you know, take that moment to really think, does this make sense for me? Is this a breed? Like get to know the breed. If it's a dog, what kind of exercise do they need? What, what kind of behavior do they tend to have and understand how your lifestyle may or may not fit with that. Also something that Caesar talks about because certain animals need like X amount of exercise uh -huh. per day, right? Yeah. And if they're having bad behavior, it's usually a function of them releasing stress that they haven't been able to release because they aren't getting exercised or even mentally stimulated properly. I mean, I adopted Bella, who's a German shepherd, and I could exercise her all day long, but she still needs mental stimulation because she's so smart. Um for her to, to not have that adverse behavior. So you really have to understand like what kind of breed you're thinking about bringing into your home. Um, and does that fit with your lifestyle? I mean, yeah. this is a, a living, breathing, sentient being that's going to have feelings. And if they're doing something that you don't like, it's usually to get your attention. So you might want to think about what am I doing that could be, you know, how could we um, positively influ influence the situation? If you don't know about the dogs and work with a trainer, I mean, really, truly think about working with a trainer because that has changed my life, Bella's life, our family's life for the better. We got to know so much about her and how to just take her for a walk because that was feeling like really stressful at first. So yeah, just get to know your breeds and, and really think about lifestyles. That's my wisdom. I love that so much, Tess, because I think it's so important to know and understand the type of breed of animal that you have. I mean, I think one, there was, I think here in California, because uh, I think pit bulls are outlawed in some, some states, mm -hmm. but 21 out of the 37 dogs, 21 out of 37 dogs in adoption kennels were pit bulls, right? So this is, these are the, this is the type of breed that I have. And, you know, most pit bulls are highly energetic dogs. They need sufficient exercise. They need to be loved. They're very emotional beings. They are, they were like nanny dogs. So they, I can't remember how many different facial reactions they can register. I think it was like 230 different reactions that they know that they can register from mm -hmm. facial expression. So they're very expressive, very, very, very um, emotional beings. Mm -hmm. And so I think this is one of the highest breeds that's abused that isn't taken care of properly. People think, oh, I'm going to get a pit bull because I want protection or I want, you know, to look cool. I don't know whatever the mentality is, but I think people realize that they're cute or they're cute puppies mm -hmm. and then they get big and it's like, okay, now I live in a small space and I can't, I don't have time to walk them. I don't have time to take care of them. And so I think this is one of the biggest, biggest issues, you know, mm -hmm. and look, this is going to be really unpopular. And I hope, you know, I was going to say, I hope I don't get canceled, but you guys know how I feel about fucking being canceled. I don't <laughs> fucking care. So, um, <laughs> But what really drives me crazy is when parents decide to get their children animals and then realize how much work it is. And I, I think it's smart when you do it to try and teach kids about taking care of their pet, but realize that you are the adult and that's still your responsibility, not your child's responsibility. I say that because I've been in situations where... I have friends that have done this for their kids and then expect their kids to pick up their poop and play with them and, you know, do all the things. And I'm like, dude, don't put that responsibility on a child, you know? So that's the one thing that I will say, parents, if you are introducing an animal to your household with little kiddos, I think it's important, yes, to teach your kids responsibility, but remember that this being is like having another child. <laughs> 
Mm -hmm. It's like if you have two kids and you want a dog, you're essentially getting three children. So I think it's very important to recognize the sort of heavy burden and not even burden because it's such a joy. Right. But like the responsibility, the great responsibility of having an animal. So, wow. How intense. I wish I had no idea this was going to turn into an animal lovers episode. I hope that you all enjoyed this conversation and look, we're so happy to hear what your thoughts are and maybe any experiences that you want to share any great experience, happy experiences that you've had saving an animal or if there's organizations that you work with or you know of that we can uh, add to our resources or add to the resources page of this podcast, please let us know. Um, As always, it's such a pleasure and privilege to be here with all of you. Tessa, thank you so much. Mm, It's my pleasure. Thank you. We will be back next week. Thank you so much for listening to the Radically Loved Podcast. Please remember to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you get your podcasts and follow us on Facebook at Radically Loved Rosie, on Instagram at Rosie Acosta, and Twitter at Rosie Acosta. By the way, this is original music by DJ Taz Rashid. You can follow DJ Taz on Spotify and check out the best music for yoga and meditation. This has been a Mod Pod Studio production. Check them out at www.modpodstudio.com.